Okay, recording started, so the meeting is yours when you'd like the floor. Great, thank you very much. Uh, well, good day, everyone. Welcome to the ICC Fire Service Membership Council of February 23rd. Good to see everyone here. Um, Carl, can you please do a roll call? Sure will. So Chief Reed, I've got you. Tim Deal, I saw you. Brian Adams, I see you. Rick Boisford, are you on? Rick Boisford. Wendy Collins. Wendy Collins. Marshall DeRochers is in the air today and sends his regrets, and we wish him a uh, happy 60th birthday today uh, while he's on his way home from the NASFM meeting in uh, North Carolina. Chief Hyde, are you with us? Yes, sir, I'm here. Gotcha. Ed Kaminsky, I've got you, sir, thanks. Chief King, I see you. Uh, Jonathan Lund, I don't know if he's able to make it. He sent me uh, a maybe for today. Jonathan Lund. Okay, Larry Medina. Marshall Nelson. I'm here. Gotcha, Doug, thanks. Kelly, I've got you. Tina, are you here? Okay, Steve Swarthout. I am here. Got you, Steve. Marshall Toomey. Sean Toomey. Chief Wassum. Director Metz, I've got you. I think Tim Schmitz is going to be out today as well, too. So let's see. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, we've got a quorum. Great. Thank you very much. All right. We're going to move on to our guest presentation. I'd like to introduce Dominic Kazmiskis. Please tell me I said that right. Close enough. Ah, oh, I was trying. <laughs> I was practicing. Um, welcome, Dominic. Um, he is from the American Fire Sprinkler Association. So I will turn it over to you. Welcome. Oh, thank you very much, Christine. Thanks for the invitation and the, uh, the opportunity to spread a little bit about the uh, American Fire Sprinkler Association. Um, just uh, before we get into them, just uh, background on me. Started in the uh, junior fire service at 16 years old in 1974. Went in the military for four years, came out, went to the senior department. I was on the volunteer side for about 32 years. I was also a part-time fire instructor over those years and uh, also became a fire instructor with all the uh, bells and whistles. And uh, all that took place in northern New Jersey uh, for the most part. Um, as I started moving around the country and seeking better jobs uh, and better employment uh, in Pennsylvania, in the fire service for about four years, Virginia for about two years, and uh, New York State for about two or three years before I hung up the spurs and just uh, couldn't do it anymore, just not enough time in the day. And then back in 2007 with Clifton Park Fire Department, and I uh, was working for NFSA for 19 years, and that's why I was running out of time to volunteer my time. I was on the road quite a bit. And then uh, went to work for American Fire Sprinkler Association a couple of years ago. And uh, people ask about the differences. There really isn't too much difference, uh, except just the way our our funding and our due structures are built. Uh, uh, the American Fire Sprinkler Association started 42 years ago uh, based on training needs. And the AFSA today is still, um, that is the um, backbone of the American Fire Sprinkler Association is a uh, training uh, we are available to provide training uh, to our 32 chapters uh, anytime, anywhere they desire, as well as uh, anybody else who wants to push the magic button on our website that says request a seminar. And uh, we have a full staff of event managers that uh, arrange uh, seminars uh, and work out a price for you. We don't have a set price structure you can see on our website, which is firesprinkler.org. 
Uh, basically what it is, is our event and staff management team, uh, event staff management, uh, events management team, the staff will work out a price uh, based on you know, the location, the instructors that'll be used and what it's gonna cost to stay in the region um, for hotels and other transportation, et cetera. And uh, they will throw a number at you. And uh, if you agree with the number, then we'll schedule the seminar. Uh, I would first check to see if we have a chapter in your area. Uh, some states like California, we have four chapters and then there's a bunch of states we don't have any chapters. Um, however, uh, most of the uh, more populated states, uh, there's uh, at least one AFSA chapter um, in those states. Um, some states like Illinois, Indiana, that's one chapter that cover two, uh, two states, et cetera. But um, again, we were based on training going back 42 years ago. There was a um, there was no organized uh, fitter training for merit shop contractors, and that's when the AFSA started. And uh, they wrote uh, uh, their uh, uh, poor book for safety and uh, tools and uh, the gen general knowledge that a, a fitter would need, an apprentice would need, uh, along with four books uh, going through four levels over a period of four years, uh, 8,000 8, hour training uh, period uh, to become a, a recognized apprentice or a certified or a, a, a trained apprentice uh, certification, obviously would that, that would be in, uh, uh, that would involve the state and the city. We don't get involved in that. That would be up to their employer to make sure that's taken care of. But um, Again, we're still back. Our backbone is training. Uh, we've got a very strong staff, uh, 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 world known uh, uh, fire protection engineers, uh, staff uh, that do training, as well as uh, s some other folks uh, from AFSA, uh, is, uh, including myself, uh, some other engineers or engineers in training that are with AFSA. And we have some consultants uh, that AFSA is very familiar with that we use uh, around the country as well to do the training. Um, and it, uh, one example I have uh, is that, you know, anything you need, if you don't see it on our website or uh, you're looking for a specific topic and we're not used to it, we'll develop it. What happened recently in the mm, last recently, I mean, five or six or seven years was uh, there was a development of, uh, a, I would call a contrary inspection and testing and maintenance certification. Uh, for uh, inspection, testing, and maintenance of water-based fire protection systems. And it's, uh, uh, we know why, but I throw it out there anyway. Why would the Association, uh, American Society of Sanitation Engineers, develop a fire sprinkler uh, certification for inspection, testing, and maintenance? And it was way past NFPA 25. Actually, it's very liable to uh, contractors. It goes into uh, making engineering decisions while doing a fire inspection. Um, we found the need for it. We had areas of the country that were adopting it. AFSA jumped on it. We, get, we had two, fire, two of our instructors become uh, certified instructors by ASSE. We have a location in Pennsylvania that was certified by ASSE to be a, a place for hands-on training for this program. And we started training it, even though we disagree with it because our members needed it, needed it. and uh, our, our offer goes the same for AHJs. Something in water-based fire protection uh, that um, you, uh, you need, uh, you're seeking, just uh, let us know. It's probably developed already, but you never know. If it's not developed, we'll, we'll, we'll get it done. Um, any questions on training or AFSA's background at all, if none? I'll move on to uh, uh, probably the, the biggest news we, uh, we brought about last year is, uh, well, two years ago, we started a trial AHJ membership. It was a free membership for one year. Uh, we, had, uh, we had so many people that joined the uh, AHJs that joined the AFSA. Our board of directors said, let's just make it free. And uh, so it's nothing's ever free in this world, but it is no cost to the person that joins. Um, it's we call it no cost because it is supported through the dues and the income at AFSA, but an AHJ membership is at no cost to the AHJ that joins. And uh, uh, when you when you join and you get your paperwork somewhere in there, you'll see it has like a, it has like a twelve hundred month uh, membership. So if you're going to be around for for ten years, uh, about ten years from the day you join, look for the cancel uh, for the uh, uh, renewal. 
Uh, so it is a basic, almost a perpetual membership with AFSA. You have all the same rights and all the same benefits as any other membership level at AFSA. You have access to our technical department. Uh, they are very quick to respond. There is always somebody every day, five, uh, all the business days, but basically five days a week during business hours, there is somebody in our technical department to research your question. You can send uh, just an email, you can make a phone call, you can send uh, drawings. Uh, they have access to get into BIMS or CAD or any other files you want to send them and take a look at what you're talking about. But most things are handled over um, uh, uh, through an email uh, questioning uh, areas of uh, the, the NFPA standards and other standards. Um, uh, as you can imagine, we get a lot of ASTM and ASME uh, questions as well uh, at the technical department. Uh, we do a uh, free webinar uh, quarterly uh, for AHJs. It's an AHJ specific topic, uh, and that is at no cost uh, to members of AFSA. Um, there is a handling fee for certificates, uh, contractors and other members, it's $25. For AHJ, it's $15. So if you want a paper certificate in your hands, you need one for your state certifications or any national certifications, uh, they are available. Um, I mentioned our chapters. Again, uh, I, I, I can't impress upon you enough uh, uh, to at least get on their mailing list, uh, the, the, the chapter that uh, might be in your state. Uh, or closest to you, uh, some areas of the country, there there may not uh, be a, a chapter that would be uh, worthy for you, but you're more than welcome to sign up with them. Uh, quite often, the the chapters AHJ memberships are at no cost as well. Um, uh, I think some of the some of the uh, uh, chapters do charge, but it's a it's a nominal fee. Uh, uh, AFSA staff members are very well involved with NFPA technical committees. We have staff. Uh, we have staff and uh, members of all categories: uh, engineers, HJs, as well as contractors that rep represent AFSA. On uh, I think it's 53 NFPA standards right now. We're not real he heavy into the I codes. Uh, we've had a lot of discussion since I came on board two years ago uh, to change that, including uh, showing up at the ICC annual conference with a booth. Um, and being available as a resource, uh, whether it's uh, uh, almost anything you can think of, anything you're looking for. Uh, we've got uh, um, quite a list of resources on our website that we can get to you. We've got papers uh, that we've published and uh, or we just get you in contact with uh, whoever you need to talk to. Um, not that this would be an AHJ thing, but uh, uh, again, we are a, a, a membership association. We do provide access to um, insurance companies, uh, recommendations, uh, uh, and uh, uh, legal staff as well uh, for contractors that are uh, looking for, they, they're just, they've got a legal question that's out of our, our purview. None of us are attorneys that I know of at AFSA. So uh, we have a, a consulting firm we send them to, and then uh, they, depending on their question, they'll research their question with attorneys in their area. Uh, and get those contractors in touch with the, uh, the appropriate uh, resource there. But uh, uh, let's see, something we've really gotten into, into more is government relations. And uh, I wouldn't call it lobbying, it's more advocacy, but in some states, like uh, I spent 17 years in New York State, anything you can't, whatever you wanna call it, uh, advocating or lobbying, it's still lobbying in the eyes of New York State. But uh, AFSA, again, uh, something I've uh, I spoke to uh, several people with when I came on board with AFSA and got us more into the legislative game. Um, we uh, we bought into a legislative platform. We've been monitoring, uh, obviously, with some of our key words that uh, we have uh, uh, in our uh, search engine on this platform. Uh, a lot of fire department stuff comes up, so I, I see a lot of things going on for the fire services as well as other emergency services that pop up uh, uh, on my radar every morning as I sort through them. But of course, uh, uh, we are uh, a contractor-based organization. I'm always looking for things that uh, may affect our contractors. Um, but if there's something we can ever do for you or something you need or uh, uh, something in the fire protection side of things that is uh, um, mutually beneficial to uh, AHJs as well as contractors, let me know. 
um, I'll reach out to if, if there's, there's a chapter and I'll, I can reach out to the members uh, across the state if there is not a chapter and uh, uh, do whatever I can do to, to help uh, 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 get if you need boots on the ground at the hill, uh, let me know. We can, we'll see what we can do to make that happen. Um, media relations is another area we've gotten into uh, strongly, basically, uh, uh, especially with the freeze ups that have been going on. Our headquarters is in Dallas, Texas, and they've had a heck of a, the last two winners uh, has been a little bit of a shock to a lot of employees at AFSA. I am based near Bristol, Tennessee for the last year and a half. So, um, uh, uh, but having, uh, been in New Jersey for 36 years and New York for 17 years, I feel their pain. Uh, so, um, uh, how that ties into the media relations is just dealing with the newspapers and the reporters that, you know, yeah, it's after the damage is done. They report on a sprinkler break. And of course it's the sprinklers fault that this, that, that there's water all across the school. Well, we've been really, you know, obviously, uh, with winter time, we're really on our toes with that, trying to, uh, Call reporters, contact reporters, whether it's uh, uh, television stations, newspapers, whatever the media outlet is, and working with them. Um, I was uh, privileged enough to get on uh, the front page of two local papers here in Johnson City, uh, Tennessee, and Kingsport, Tennessee, along with uh, a few other people that chimed in on the subject. And we had a nice Sunday front page article explaining why it wasn't the fire sprinkler's fault that it froze. Uh, so, um, you know, we are uh, just just trying to protect fire sprinklers and, and help uh, make sure that the public understands and make sure people that are within the industry, AHJs, contractors, uh, designers understand um, what sprinklers do and what sprinklers don't do. Uh, and uh, um, and uh, again, just trying to be a resource. Um, any questions so far? Anybody? Uh, Anything you think I skipped over too fast or otherwise uh, I'll wind it up with um, uh, don't worry about our names, especially spelling my last name. Just remember uh, an email membership at firesprinkler.org. Uh, anybody in the membership department, everybody in the membership department will get that email. Uh, the appropriate person will answer your question or address your issue. Um, and uh, our website again, firesprinkler.org. Uh, you can go in there to join uh, and firesprinkler.org slash join if you want the uh, uh, to get right into there and you can take a look at the uh, uh, resources and everything else. It's quite a, I don't want to say it's a complicated website, but there's a lot of stuff on there. If anybody's ever dealt with building web websites, you've got one camp that it's never enough on your website. They can't find what they want or you got the other camp. You got too much stuff on your website. They can never find what they want. So we kind of went the route of we've got too much stuff and you you can't find what you want. But um, if you take your time on firesprinkler.org and take a look at the uh, uh, the main titles and work your way through the subtitles, you'll find it. And if you can't, just call me, just write me. I'll get you to it, whatever you need. And with that, I'll leave it open for questions. Thank you very much, Dominic. Does anyone have any questions for Dominic? Well, I just want to say thank you for the accommodation of the for AHJs for free membership, um, which includes the technical support. Um, sometimes uh, we may have uh, questions that we kind of circle around and try to find. So um, I appreciate that the easy availability to be able to to get that service. So yeah, um, that seems to be the seller. When I, the the month before I started with AFSA, we had ninety three AHJ members. We now have over six hundred. Oh, great, great. All right, last call. Any questions for Dominic? All right, thank you, Dominic, for being here and presenting to us today. Um, thank you for the great information. Um, and you're welcome to stay on if you'd like. Otherwise, absolutely. We'll see you at a future meeting. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, let's go to the next item. Uh, opening remarks. Um, I do. Uh, I would like to say welcome to those of you who are first time um, attending a fire service membership council meeting. Um, this is uh, a governing committee or council meeting, but it is something that um, we in encourage anyone to join, um, anyone to participate. 
um, in any of our work groups. Um, so not to put everyone on the spot, but if you are the uh, if you are attending for the first time, if you can just activate your hand raise um, icon so that we everyone can see um, who you are and wish you welcome. Um, also, if you're not a first timer, but you, it has been a while since you've been here, um, we appreciate you coming back to the Fire Service Membership Council. And if you could uh, put your hand raise on as well. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's awesome. Look at that. So I'm, I'm wondering, Christine, do you want to spend just a couple seconds just doing brief introductions for folks to, so that they can introduce themselves? Just, you know, name, title, org, and, and where you're from kind of Absolutely. thing? Absolutely. Absolutely. Why don't I just go down the list as I see it? Uh, Mike Martin. Mike, can you yes. hear me? Yes, yeah, I can hear you. You can just introduce yourself and let us know where you're from and welcome to I'm FSP. From, uh, Manchester Township, New Jersey, fire marshal construction official, involved with the fire service about 50 years and with the construction also, have multiple licenses in the state of New Jersey and also finishing up my doctorate degree in um, public administration with the files, uh, fire service. Wow, great, great, thank you. Um, Adam Saylor. Yeah, I'm here. Adam, can you just introduce yourself and let us know where you're from? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Adam Saylor. I'm a building fire inspector as well as a fire investigator out of Seward, Alaska. Great. Thank you. Yeah, I think uh, he Adam, gets the, the prize for like most remote connection today. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know, most cold? I don't know. I, I don't know how the East Coast is doing right now. Um, let's see. Uh, Ashley Duncan. Um, I am one of the assistant fire marshals here in Midwest City, Oklahoma. Um, I've been here for about five years now, and I do plane reviews, um, building inspections. We do origin and cause investigations. We're kind of widespread here. There's five of us in our office, but we cross train enough that we kind of dabble in different areas. Um, but other than that, yeah, it's my first time attending. Great. Thank you for being here. Um, Charles Biggis. Did I say that right? Yes, that is correct. I'm um, Charles Biggis. Um, I've been in the fire service for 35 years, um, 24 years um, with Baltimore City Fire Department, um, 11 years in their um, fire marshal's office, and uh, now work for the city of Rockville, Maryland. Um, and I've been with them um, 11 years, and uh, I'm a fire code plans examiner for them. And the East Coast is doing fine. We got 70 degrees weather here in Maryland, but tomorrow we're supposed to get snow. <laughs> well, welcome. Uh, Dory Booth. Uh, good morning, Dory Booth. I'm a Division Chief of Community Risk Reduction for Sedona Fire District um, in Sedona, Arizona. We do a little bit of everything, investigations, code enforcement, pub ed, PIO. Happy to be here. Great, thank you. Uh, Barry Gupton. Uh, Barry Gupton, North Carolina Department of Insurance, Office of State Fire Marshal, Manufactured Building Division, and we regulate manufactured and modular buildings in North Carolina. Great, thank you for being here. Uh, here. Gary Arnold. Hi there, I'm Gary Honnold, the Regional Director for NFPA's Northwest Field Office. I'm out of Montana. Um, I spent 25 years in the fire service prior to going to work for NFPA um, and uh, had a code background, fire suppression background, and currently with NFPA, I just help uh, our external stakeholders, which would be all of you as well in the Northwest region for the eight states that are my responsibility. And it is negative five degrees with negative 25 degree wind chill here. Cold. <laughs> well, welcome, Gary. Thank you. Uh, Joe Sicaro. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Uh, Joe Sicaro, I was Assistant Fire Marshal for San Bernardino County Fire Department in California. Happily retired. Talked to Carly. He says, nope, please stay on. Um, shout out to Randy Darcy. And uh, now I live in Arizona. So shout out to my Arizona peeps. And uh, 
We haven't been as cold over here, but I have been to Antarctica three times and it was really cold there. <laughs> Welcome back, Joe. Thank you. <laughs> Kelly Brooks. Yeah, good morning or good afternoon, wherever you might be. Uh, my name is Kelly Brooks. I'm the fire marshal for the West Metro Fire Protection District, which is in Lakewood, Colorado, a western suburb of Denver. Um, and I've been in the fire service about 25 years with 15 years in fire prevention. Thanks Wonderful. for having me. Oh, thank you for being here. Derek Reddy. Good afternoon. Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay, I've been having problems with my good afternoon. My name's Derek Reddy. I'm the deputy chief fire marshal for the number one city in not only the United States, not only the world, but the universe. That's the city, Charm City, USA, Baltimore, Maryland. And that guy, Charles Biggest, that uh, uh, mentioned his name earlier, I do not know him. Maybe he was with Baltimore County Fire, but um, this is my first time. I've been in the fire service now for 33 years, and um, I'm glad to be here. Wonderful. Thank you for being here. Uh, Timothy Annis. Hello, uh, Tim Annis. I'm the uh, fire marshal for UC Davis. Um, I'm retired out of local government. Um, I've been out of touch for about four or five years just trying to get into the university uh, system and get people back involved that weren't involved in ICC and local and state um, areas. So that's good to be back. Great, good to see you, Tim. Last but not least, Stephen Toth. Hello. Well, you, you just saved the best for last, I guess we could say that. Uh, Steve Tooth, I work for Montgomery County, Maryland currently. I'm retired from Prince George County, firefighter paramedic. Uh, when I first started my career in Prince George, I was a building inspector with a little known organization called VOCA, and that's where I got my CBO. I've also got a CFPS, uh, and uh, Montgomery County is my retirement gig. But for the most part, we stay pretty busy. We do existing structures. Uh, we've got a great group of all retired firefighters, and uh, we really uh, work hard to look out for the citizens and visitors of Montgomery County. Thank you. Well, thank you again. And thank you all um, again for being here. Um, this is great that you have all um, come today. Hopefully you'll be able to attend future meetings. Um, you'll hear a little bit more about the activities of our work groups. We highly encourage um, your participation. If you find a work group that you think uh, works for you or that you have an interest in that you'd like to learn a little bit more and, and participate in those uh, meetings, uh, feel free. Um, you can reach out to myself or Carl um, or the group leads um, as they speak. Um, and they every uh, work group has their own month mid month meeting, so you'll be able to get a little bit more uh, closer knit um, uh, discussions with the work group. So again, thank you all for being here. It really means a lot. I'm excited to have um, a lot of new people uh, engaging with the Fire Service Membership Council, and uh, hopefully we'll see you um, consistently in the future. Uh, next item is uh, any additions or corrections to the agenda. Hearing none, um, approval of the minutes, the January 19 um, minutes. I'm looking for a motion to approve. This is Kelly. I'll make a motion to approve as submitted. Thank you, Kelly. Is there a second? This is Doug Nelson. I'd all second that. Thank you, Doug. Any discussion? Calling the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Great, they passed. Thanks, Carl, for, for processing those minutes. Um, so the next item is our work group updates. Um, so Brian, I will start with you with member engagement. Sure. Um, so we had our, uh, not our first meeting, but uh, we had our most recent meeting now that we've got a schedule set up this past Tuesday. Um, so for some of the new people, um, that are on the meeting today, uh, kind of the purpose of the membership engagement uh, group, work group uh, for FSMC is kind of driving up participation in um, the FSMC activities as well as the monthly meetings 
uh, trying to provide some um, educational opportunities and, and just some outreach, uh, just like, you know, Dominic uh, today with, uh, you know, the different organizations that some of the AHJs might not be familiar with. Um, so, so driving that engagement um, through uh, the membership work group. Um, so, um, you know, you'll probably hear a common theme, but um, uh, through the other work groups, but for the new uh, participants, you know, you don't have to be on the governing committee to participate in the work groups. Um, so we're always looking for input uh, and participation in those membership uh, engagement is no different. Uh, so some of the things that uh, we talked about at our meeting um, uh, was just, again, kind of driving that participation. The main focus being uh, setting up some of the presentations for upcoming meetings and getting that schedule um, kind of uh, kind of laid out uh, for the rest of this year so that everybody can know what's what's coming up and uh, we can set that. Um, and then also another topic of discussion um, the pertinent to the group here. Um, we're also trying to expand our list of contacts and resources to make sure that uh, we can get things out to the local organizations. Um, so uh, obviously ICC and Carl and um, his contact list is pretty expansive, but um, if there are other local groups or organizations that you think would be pertinent, uh, we're just trying to collect some of that information so that we can we can push out some of the work that uh, FSMC is doing, as well as information from ICC and the other organizations. So um, if you have uh, ideas or contacts or groups that you think would be pertinent um, that we communicate with, you know, you can get in touch with me. Um, through email and, and we can make sure to get you added or get those groups added to the list. Uh, and then if you have also for the newcomers something that uh, um, you're experiencing um, and have a need or a desire for a topic, um, you know, uh, we're always looking for those and, and we'll find, uh, you know, the speakers or, or someone to to give that presentation. So. Um, with that, I'll turn it back back over to Christine. Uh, for those that want to participate in those meetings, the third Tuesday of the month is kind of how we have them set up now at 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, that's all I have. Great. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. All right, next is emerging issues and trends. Um, Michael is not here, so is there anyone else on that work group that would like to report out from your last meeting? Normally, I think Ed would, but I think he had to go to BCAC. Tim, you were on that, right? Yeah, and that's what I was just coming in. I wasn't sure if Kelly was going to jump in either. Um, but yeah, we had our uh, meeting uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, just getting prepped for the topics for this year and what's coming up, um, as long as well as a, a update and working with the public awareness and training to try to push out some of those other issues to the fire service. Uh, next meeting is going to be March 13th. I uh, figure it's going to be a little bit more comprehensive um, as we really start getting uh, that form finalized and those uh, out uh, those updates put out. Great, thank you. And just an explanation of the work group for emerging issues and trends. Um, this is a work group that works to identify and and look into um, things across the country that we're seeing that are either a new issue. Um, or it's a trend we're seeing across the country. Um, some, some things that they're working on right now are um, things like sleeping pods, um, interior or, or um, inside fire pits. Um, so there's some things that are going on that might be interest of, uh, to any of you, um, but it, it's kind of the, the current um, stream of, of things that come up that we want to investigate a little bit more through the Fire Service Membership Council. So uh, that's an explanation if you're interested um, in attending one of those meetings. Carl, do you have offhand when their um, next mid-month is? Oh, sorry, Tim, you already said March 13, right? So, um, so you can go ahead and join that meeting as well. Uh, public awareness, Steve. Hello. Um, unfortunately, with having this many new members on, you you guys are all going to get our pitch. We need help on our committee, okay? And and so uh, I just wanted to talk about uh, I just wanted to talk about public awareness committee real quick and and kind of what we do. Um, it's um, 
we're, we're always looking we're always looking for new participation so if you if you have some time we would certainly appreciate you helping us out uh, the main objective of our committee is to provide educational and informational materials uh, to the ICC membership and arrested code officials and general public uh, through messages and articles submitted to the website um, web page that any kind of social media that we can find so we're always looking for people that uh, can help us out with that and it's uh, it's actually kind of it's a fun committee um, right now, just for an example, we're working on uh, a public safety for public safety month. We're working on a 10 minute video that will go out on um, community awareness. Um, we're also working on uh, a document that's going to help AHJs a little bit um, fill in some of the blank areas in the code when it comes to lithium ion batteries, storage, you know, what you see in inspections and that type of stuff. Um, we're also looking at, uh, we're working on residential sprinkler um, across the country to help AHJs if they're looking to to pass an ordinance or get get residential sprinkler system ordinance of some type put into place. Uh, we'll have some information that can probably help you out or at least some people you can reach out to and talk to to help you with that. Um, if you're looking for an example of something we've done in the last couple of years, you can go to the website and we did a uh, construction site safety document. Um, that was uh, well received. Um, that uh, that gives you kind of an example of some stuff that that we are working on. Um, we meet um, the second Thursday of every month. Our next one will be March 9th, uh, and we meet at uh, 10 o'clock uh, um, Pacific Standard Time. So if you, if you're interested in that, reach out to Carl and he can get you that information, uh, or Christine or myself. And for all of you that are down in the Southwest right now, I'm really jealous because in Southern California, we're having horrible weather like everybody else. You guys are having my weather, the 80 degrees and 90 degrees. So right now I'm, I'm chilly. <laughs> Great, thank you, Steve. Uh, next is training and education. Mark isn't here. Um, so I'm wondering if someone from the training and education work group can speak uh, about your last meeting. Doug or William? Yeah, I can jump in. Um, from what I recall, uh, <laughs> we just talked about trying to build out the calendar for the year, <clears throat> revisited the goals of the committee, which I don't recall off the top of my head, um, but basically it's to provide that, uh, coordinate the education and training for this group and for ICC annual conference. And so we were working on that. Um, and those were the discussions from from that one and I don't think we were settled on uh, either the annual conference trainings but I think there were some good starts or uh, Mark had some people to follow up with and then we were looking for other ideas to bring into it as well so great thank you very much uh, all right um, is there any questions from the group about any of the work groups before we move on okay uh, next on the agenda is a report from officers and liaisons. Our first report is from our governing committee board liaison, Director Metz. Good morning. Good morning, Christine. How's everybody doing? Very well. Happy to be here today. A lot of stuff going on. Uh, happy to see such a large turnout for uh, this meeting here and a lot of new faces. So welcome to the Fire Service Membership Council. Uh, even see some old ones, so um, welcome back. Uh, we've been pretty active uh, as far as um, fire service related stuff. Uh, our next board meeting actually is going to be in Tampa, and it's going to be commingled with your fire service membership council meeting, so I will get to join you then. Uh, but one item that I did want to bring to everybody's attention uh, is uh, we finally closed on another mergers and acquisitions issue. Uh, we have acquired American Legal Publishing, which is another codification firm. And in our efforts to diversify um, ICC's business holdings, uh, after acquiring this one, this makes ICC the largest codifier in the country. So um, we've done a lot of acquisitions over the last couple of years. 
mainly in this area, buying up a lot of the smaller codification companies that your cities use when they publish their um, local building and fire codes, your municipal codes. Um, just another way that we're looking to um, ensure that uh, if and when the next economic downturn comes that ICC will remain a healthy company um, with other revenue streams other than publishing code books. Um, I got to spend last week at uh, the California Fire Prevention Institute with both uh, Carl Fippinger, uh, Christine Reed, and uh, Susan Dowdy. It was a great week of uh, what, what we would like to believe is the largest West Coast uh, fire prevention education offering, uh, five days in the beautiful area of Santa Barbara, California. Uh, a lot of great involvement with ICC. We did have a booth there that Carl and Susan manned answering all of the questions for California fire officials. Uh, I did get a chance to, uh, on Monday, I did receive an invitation to meet with Dr. Lori Moore Merrill uh, as they uh, had a group of about six uh, California fire service leaders meet with her uh, as she wanted to discuss issues and concerns related to her um, fire prevention summit, uh, fire prevention and control summit that she hosted in Washington DC last year. Uh, it was a great opportunity to uh, have some good dialogue with, with Dr. Lori. Uh, she understands the issues very well. Uh, we got to speak specifically on some of our issues and concerns uh, especially with one or two of the six areas in uh, the executive summary, one of which deals with um, effects of climate change. And this is where most of uh, our involvement with the area of wildfire response um, falls into this category here. Uh, one interesting thing that she did bring up, uh, which we didn't really think about it until uh, she brought it up, they're making a national push to change the way we refer to the term wildfire as opposed to wild land fire. Uh, there are two different issues going on relate to federal government funding. When we talk about the wildland area, that's more forest land, which falls under the Department of uh, Interior through the U.S. Fire Administration and uh, Department of Agriculture. When we're talking about wildfire, which is the response element to said wildland fire, that would be where the local fire agencies fall under the Department of Homeland Security. Uh, so when they're actually seeking funding in order to um, address a lot of our issues, it's important that uh, we talk about those things as wildfires as opposed to building in the wildland urban interface. I never really thought about it like that, but when you understand the federal government um, funding process and um, the different areas of the federal government on how they view things, it made complete sense. Uh, so you will see her in a lot of her um, speaking engagements specifically refer to things as wildfires, where we historically may not have used that term um, directly. Wildfire also can be very um, generic. You know, you go to other parts of the country, um, they may have wildfires, but you won't see a tree um, within, you know, 10 miles of the wildfire. Uh, it means different things to different parts of the country, but for us as local fire agencies, the response side is identical on, on how we need resources, whether it's a grass fire, uh, whether it's a, a timberland forest fire. Uh, she's trying her best to um, refocus how we refer to things um, even within her, her office. So I also got to have some good dialogue with her on the importance of codes and standards, which is um, the last bulleted item that came out of uh, her fire prevention summit. And uh, we want to challenge uh, all of your states to get actively involved in the code development process at the national level, uh, especially when it relates to uh, the fire code, international fire code, and the international wildland urban interface code. Um, you know, I know California has has had a strong contingency uh, in the past in these areas here, and we really would love to see um, more states get involved in the actual development of codes 
uh, and move beyond being users of the code. So uh, she acknowledged that and uh, we'll be looking for more ways to, to hopefully get more states and local jurisdictions involved in the code development process. Um, we talked about board meeting in Tampa. Um, I'll be with you guys for your membership council meeting as well. Uh, just a shout out for awards. Awards deadline is coming up on March 5th. I know that Christine is working on a couple letters, um, but if your agencies um, have somebody that you feel would be uh, somebody to be considered for the Robert W. Gain Fire Prevention Leadership Award or um, honorary member status out of the fire department, um, push those up to um, either Christine or Carl for the nomination process. I think we may be good for this year, but it's always uh, time to start thinking about names that you think uh, warrant recognition for those areas for future years. Uh, you will probably be receiving or see in your email a call for code committees for the upcoming Group A cycle, which will begin next year. Um, there will be uh, quite a few openings on the Fire Code Development Committee there are some people that won't be able to be returning or have chosen not to return due to other um, assignments that they've taken on within ICC. So not too soon to start thinking about whether or not you want to become involved and serve on the Code Development Committee. And uh, finally, just wanted to plug our St. Louis annual business meeting. Um, no code hearings this year, but the ABM will be occurring in October. Uh, I believe it's October 8th through the 11th um, in St. Louis. If you're uh, in the area within a dry, day's drive there, we would love to see you. Um, and then we'll be returned to our, our revamped code development process uh, for 2024, where we know we will be in Long Beach for the ABM. We don't know yet where we will be for spring code hearings for 2024, but as soon as we have that date, we will announce it for you. And uh, that's it for mine. Unless anybody has any questions, I see uh, Steve Sporthout did raise his hand. You got something for me, Steve? Yeah, Randy, yeah, Randy. Real quick, can you explain to people how they can get involved with the uh, Fire Code Development Committee? Sure, so there is an actual application process. Um, you fill out the application, express which code committees you would be interested in serving in. Uh, those applications then go to um, our Codes and Standards Committee that uh, will review applications and make recommendations to the Board of Directors for formal appointments to said committees. Uh, there are, uh, on the fire code, we do have some what we call MOU positions that are um, dedicated to organizations like uh, NASPM as well as um, the Fire and Life Safety Section of IAFC. So um, they have uh, their positions that they will be pushing people forward uh, for those names there. But there are um, non-MOU positions that anybody can uh, apply for. Uh, I have, uh, for the past two cycles, filled one of those positions. Uh, Ed Kaminsky, that was uh, previously on the call here, uh, representing uh, Clark County, has been uh, on the fire code during the last cycle as well. Um, so, you know, if you have been involved and you understand the process and you want to actually be one of the people that is hearing code change proposals, providing comment and making recommendations to the membership, uh, that would be your avenue to participate in that way. You obviously can participate through um, providing testimony uh, as a member of the fire service or uh, if you represent industry entirely um, within your, your realm to participate in that way as well. But it's really important that we have uh, well-versed and qualified individuals to fill those positions on the Fire Code Development Committee. Uh, while we were at CFPI, I did get a chance to uh, serve on a code development panel for a class that Carl Fippinger and Susan Dowdy did teach, along with Robert Marshall and Bob Davidson, uh, for those of you that know those individuals, that spoke specifically to, um, you know, our involvement, what we've learned serving on those committees, um, 
you know, trying to generate some interest in getting people to to uh, take that next step forward in their code development journey. Uh, it was a great uh, opportunity to talk about it. And Carl and Susan did a great job teaching that course there that I'm sure we'll probably see um, taught elsewhere at other conferences as well. But um, it was a great opportunity that uh, Carl extended there. So thank you for that, Carl. Uh, but that's the, the process. Uh, always great to have support if you, you know, represent an active state agency, um, you know, California Fire Chiefs Association has um, supported people. I know um, the Colorado chapter of ICC has supported people in the past for appointment to co-development uh, committees. Um, it's always a difficult decision um, having served on the committee that selects the individuals on, uh, you know, who we want to see on there, because there's always more qualified people than we have spots to serve on a code development committee. But um, if you get, if you submit an application and you get turned away, um, submit again for the next cycle. So don't let that discourage you. Um, it's just a numbers issue at that point there. I do, I do see a hand from uh, Dory Booth. Did you have a question? I do. So um, one question that's come up, and I'm new to Sedona as their fire marshal, but we've adopted, I fell into place on an adopted uh, wildland urban interface code. And one thing that seems to be lacking from everything that I can find is training on international wildland urban interface code and, and fire adaptive communities, types of materials and how to help contractors and homeowners and code officials navigate that code in relation to their environments. Where, uh, you know, and you started off your conversation talking about it and getting more states involved and, and we're, we're very much involved. It's just trying to figure out how to best educate our stakeholders in the communities and ourselves to be able to effectively and efficiently um, implement and enforce those codes. You know, I'm going to let Carl expand on that because um, he's been working with a lot of states, a lot of uh, jurisdictions as well. This has been a challenge with um, the Wildland Embered Interface Code that we're going through in California as well right now, trying to promote a statewide adoption of a California version of this. So um, Carl has a lot of experience in, in carrying this message and working with, with other states and local communities. So I'll let uh, Carl expand on that one. Sure. Thanks, Randy. So, Dory, that's a really great question. And in fact, you've got a lot of help on this call today, too. We've got a number of California members that are on here today that I'm sure would be willing to help answer those questions for you and share some best practices and examples about how California's um, kind of approach this. We also have uh, folks that are out in the regions, um, folks just like me that are out in the regions that uh, would be glad to put you in touch with all of the information and resources that we have. We do have a IWUIC training program um, that is uh, within our training department that we'd be glad to put you in touch with. We teach that on a regular basis um, and also all of the tools and the resources um, to be able to get copies of the code. And in fact, we're also developing a, a new standard, the ICC 605 standard um, around wildfire as well too. So there, without going too deeply into it in this meeting, Meeting, I'm glad to be a resource for you. I also uh, wanted to point out here too that um, uh, we have several folks from the National Fire Protection Association on board with us today. Um, I would tell you that uh, wildfire is one of those issues that all of the national organizations, um, you know, really put rank in the, you know, say the top four uh, big ones. You know, you've got uh, smoke alarms, you've got carbon monoxide alarms, automatic fire sprinklers and wildfire, right? Not necessarily in that order, but those are really the big four for all of our organizations. So um, NFPA has tools as well, too. They have um, a couple of different standards as well as the Firewise USA program. So on here, who you'd want to be able to contact, and I can uh, give you their information after the meeting as well. I know Bob Sullivan's on here. I also know that uh, Robbie Dawson is normally on here, and um, I'm trying to remember who's who's on here um, today that I think I ju that just introduced himself. That yeah, was Gary Honnold. Yep. So Gary's on here too. So we can get you in touch with. Um, those folks and get you in touch with Michelle Steinberg over at NFPA as well um, so that we can kind of attack this problem together for you and uh, offer you the tools and resources that you need. So um, that that's really kind of the broad spectrum answer to this. 
Um, and if others on the call have anything to add to that, I'd be glad to, to hear those. But I think um, in terms of summary, um, that's probably a good look at it and then uh, can certainly uh, kind of take it offline here and get you connected with the right people moving forward. Does that help? It, it really does. And, and, you know, and the training aspect of it, all of it really. But yes, I appreciate it and look forward to chatting offline about it for sure. Yep. No worries. Any other questions you had on that, Dory? No, I think you you guys gave the 50,000 foot view of what I was looking for. And then afterwards, you know, and kind of the ad hocs and whatnot of getting that brought into the state because we're really, especially in northern Arizona after last year and the uptake of fires, trying to get those implemented across all disciplines. Yeah, and you know, the other thing that I would point out, particularly for the new folks on here too, I'm just going to call out um, someone that's always on our calls here too, for the most part, is Dr. Matt Hines Aldrich. Um, so Matt uh, works in the insurance business, and um, not only do we have kind of codes expertise here, fire prevention expertise, um, but also taking a look across the spectrum, all the different uh, areas that are impacted. Um, Matt is a really good one to be able to talk to about the insurance markets out there and how regulation would uh, or maybe would not affect those markets. And Matt, I don't know if you had something to add to that at all. Nope. I'm, I'm happy to follow up with Dory. Uh, fun fact, Dory and I actually went to college together uh, way back uh, when in yeah. Eastern Kentucky University. So uh, nice. you know, I'll, ha I'll have to, uh, happily reach out to her later and, and chat. Um, so yeah. Very good. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Carl. Yep. Always. Great, Great discussion. All right. Um, all right. And thank you, Randy, for your report. Uh, moving on, um, other ICT officers and directors. I don't see any other um, directors on the call. No. Um, so we'll move on to my report. I don't have anything more than what I already said, and Randy did a great job um, explaining about the um, ICC awards and the coming deadline. So we'll just move on to report from the vice chair, Tim. Uh, I don't really have a whole lot to report. I'm just happy that Maryland has just about as much representation as California does on this call. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm good. I'm happy. So that's that's all I have right now. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, all right, staff liaison, Carl, your report, please. Yep. Uh, I'm just putting a few links into the chat here right now um, that I'm going to kind of follow up on. So just give me a moment here. Um, as I get those loaded. And I'll do this as well, just so that I can kind of, people can kind of follow along um, at home or work as it may be. And one last one. There we go. OK, so um, good to see everyone again. Thanks for the great turnout today. I'm going to um, start at the top and kind of move my way through. So um, Randy and Christine and, and others covered the uh, Code Council's awards program. For those of you not familiar with it or needing a refresh, it's open until March the 5th. Um, that first link will take you there and show you all the many different awards that are uh, offered uh, by the International Code Council. Um, some have different requirements, but we've done our best to make sure that we've streamlined the application process. Um, and generally speaking, they are all aligned in terms of uh, nomination and application process at this point with just a few variations. So um, as you navigate those, if you have any questions, please reach out to me or any of the members of the governing committee, and they'll be glad to help you navigate that. But again, nominations are open until um, the 5th, and I'll actually just share my screen here really quick, too. I forgot that I didn't do that, um, so you can kind of see. Uh, where we are. So hopefully you guys can see that unless that's just coming up as a blank screen right now, is it? Yeah, it's blank. All right, it'll come up in a minute. Just give it about 30 seconds or so. Every once in a while it decides to hang like that for me. Um, so the next one that we're going to talk about is the ICC Spring Interchange. Um, the Spring Interchange is at the end of April down in Tampa Bay. Um, our governing committee, I sent you guys a uh, message about um, being able to reply back for uh, in-person attendance at the ICC Spring Interchange. Um, everyone on the call is, in, is invited to um, attend that, uh, that event down in Tampa. We will have our meeting 
on the Sunday of that event. And um, since my computer is locked, I don't have all the specific information up in front of me right now about it. But um, what is that one? April the I'm trying to just look it up really quick on my phone. April 29th. April, April 30th. Yep. I think it's yeah, it's uh, April 30th and then the week uh, following through like Thursday. So April 30th through, I believe, Thursday the 4th. Um, and just about any time now, I'm sure this thing will unfreeze. So um, that's the uh, the ICC spring interchange. Uh, we also have an open call for instructors uh, that's available on the ICC website that I put in the chat as well. Feel free to um, take a look at that one. Um, the call for instructors is also accompanied by an application form for an open call for presentations. Um, so that's something that we have not done um, since right around the, the time that COVID came to town, and we're excited to have that back open again. I know Matthew Wynn, our, our senior vice president for uh, training and education, is very excited to be able to accommodate those and call for those now. So we're looking to leverage the talents of our members and others um, in industry that have something to offer. Um, so if you're interested in uh, call for instructors or you already have a presentation that you'd like to have considered for any of our conferences, um, including our fall conference, and there we go, right at the end of my presentation, it uh, it decides to unlock, right? So um, let me just go back and, and kind of uh, and, and redo on this. So here's the Code Council's awards program um, that I showed you up front. Um, the ICC Spring Interchange website is here that I linked to. So April 29th through May the 3rd, I stand corrected. So it's May the 3rd, the Grand Hyatt in Tampa Bay, Florida. And you can go through here and uh, there's a registration page. Um, the agenda has been published, including a Building Safety Month reception from 6 to 8 p.m. on Sunday the 30th. Um, we've got all of the sessions that we'll be offering throughout the week listed here by track and day, um, including code training, certification, uh, plan review. Uh, we've even got one for uh, for the design professionals, architects, designers, engineers. So um, really a great week. Um, our board will be meeting that Saturday as well. So our, our leadership will all be in town. Um, the hotel information um, is located on here. So you can see that just kind of opens up to a special rate um, that you can get at the Hyatt in Tampa Bay. Um, and then, of course, our sponsors page. So that's a little bit about the uh, the spring interchange. Again, uh, supported travel for members of our governing committee and the expectation is in person. Um, so we'd like to get a total count on that. The other thing, Christine, is if we could get some sense. Um, I know Bill Nash is on the phone today, um, but I wanted to um, uh, just kind of put out there that we've identified either a uh, a, a potential lunch opportunity for fire service membership council and building membership council to do a joint uh, meal together or potentially a bit of a later meal on um, on uh, Sunday night um, that would take place after the uh, or just before the uh, the uh, the, re the building safety month reception concludes. So um, just wanted to get a, a sense from folks if they'd be interested in wanting to do that and when. So either a kind of a midday lunch opportunity or an evening um, one after the reception. <clears throat> and then finally, here's the call for instructors. So this is our full training page. Um, we have SME and presentation information on here, also training topics. And then, as I said, that open call for presentations with a pretty extensive explanation in here uh, about our in-person opportunities, online opportunities, and then online self-paced. Um, there, there's a whole variety of ways to get involved here. So we are excited to put those out and uh, have you submit for those. So you have all the links and I'll take any questions from here. Any questions for Carl? Great, a lot of information. Thanks, Carl. Yep. Uh, I also wanted to thank Carl. If you haven't seen it in the chat yet, if you scroll up in the chat messages, you'll see information of all of our work groups, um, the leads for the work groups and their email addresses. So you have the contact information. If you'd like to scroll up and find any or all of the work groups, um, that you might want to learn a little bit more about. Um, you have the leads information, and then you can also reach out to Carl or myself. All right, next on the agenda is our um, membership council officers and liaisons. Um, building membership council um, is 
Tom Allen, but I don't see Tom on here. Yeah, Tom messaged me and said that he's in with his fire prevention folks today. So he is uh, on alternate duty from our meeting. That's fine. Thank you. Continuity yeah, and you. outreach subcommittee, uh, Tim. Yeah. So sorry, Christine. I just say the next building membership council meeting is going to be March 15th. So I do know that. So. Okay, great. And then do you have anything for continuity and outreach, Tim? Uh, yeah, I mean, we just had our meeting uh, last month. Um, so we're in the pr process of revamping that matrix that we have uh, to make it more topic based, be a little bit easier to find. Um, we are still looking for you know those new topics, new new items that come out. Um, we also have a couple other new initiatives that, that we're going to get started. Um, and after this next membership, building membership, uh, we'll see where we which ones go forward. And the next meeting for that group is going to be April eighth, I believe, is the next meeting of outreach and continuity. And we are looking still to try to get together a little informal meeting in Tampa. Um, just uh, the liaisons and uh, kind of see where we go from there. And that's all I got. Okay, thank you very much. Global Membership Council, Rock. Uh, thank you, Chief Reed. Uh, my name is Rock Meng. Uh, I'm a fire protection engineer uh, for the new members joining. Uh, I'm representing uh, the Global Membership uh, Committee. Um, ICC has been adopted uh, all over the world. Um, so. Uh, the global services actually have two offices, uh, one in Abu Dhabi. Uh, the other one, uh, it's like brand new, which just opened up uh, right now. It's in uh, business actually in Australia, had a, a formal uh, building code official there. Uh, so the leadership, including uh, Dominic Sims, uh, I think a couple of board members are actually heading to Ab Abu Dhabi office, uh, try to promote the business there. Um, on the second, uh, announcement is that uh, the next uh, ABM, uh, typically uh, the global forum, uh, it's re reserved for half a day. Uh, I thought, you know, it's a popular venue. Uh, we usually invite, uh, uh, you know, speakers uh, from overseas, uh, discuss, you know, topics uh, that are interested uh, globally. Uh, however, this year uh, I see decided that, you know, uh, they're no longer Gonna have a uh, uh, separate global forum, so uh, we're, I guess, internally, uh, you know, trying to figure out how we're gonna replace that. Uh, just trying to uh, figure out uh, time and uh, uh, place. Uh, lastly, uh, apparently, uh, the lithium iron battery issue is still hot. Uh, the major jurisdiction committee, uh, I guess, they're having separate discussions. Uh, there's others I've heard, uh, so it seems like, you know, we're duplicating efforts, uh, within, you know, this whole ICC umbrella. Uh, so, uh, I think I want to bring, uh, this topic to our next work group, uh, education. Uh, maybe we should, you know, uh, provide, uh, some type of guidance, uh, for the fire services and for HJs. Um, you know, since we have expertise and we've done this um, webinar, so, uh, you know, the iron's still hot, uh, you know, we might as well just do it. Um, uh, so uh, I think uh, I'll, 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 you know, make that a discussion topic at the next next work group. Um, that's all I have. Great. Thank you, Rock. Uh, Randy, your hand is up. Yeah, I was just going to uh, throw out there that our um, executive committee of the board of directors as well as a lot of our senior leaders including dom have already made their trip to dubai um they were there for multiple days meeting with a lot of um, the leaders there within abu dhabi um, definitely promoting um, the use of codes and standards throughout the region there uh, but that event has already occurred and from what i'm hearing right now uh it was a great event and a lot of um good dialogue was had with with uh, the leaders over there. So we'll know more once an official report comes out. OK, great. Thank you. Um, and thank you, Rock. Um, next, um, emerging leaders. I don't see Allison Cook on the call. Um, 
And then is there any other membership councils that you'd like to um, give us um, a report or say a few things about your membership council? Okay, uh, moving on, uh, new business. Um, Carl, I'm gonna throw this to you, um, but uh, actually I'm gonna throw the whole thing to you. Um, if you can talk about the uh, CSFI symposium coming up. Yep, let me, uh, I, I wasn't quite prepared, but I will <laughs> find it here. So hold on a second. Um, to see everybody again. So what we're talking about here is the Congressional Fire Services Institute uh, dinner and symposium for 2023. So I am going to put that one in the chat right now too, so that everybody can see it because it is open to all. Um, although uh, we do have a, um, it, an inside piece to this in that the uh, the code council um, is a member of the um, the Congressional Fire Services Institute's uh, National Advisory Committee. So um, with that, um, we do uh, sponsor the organization and um, part of those benefits means that we have a table for 10 reserved at the um, at the CFSI dinner. So um, I, as an aside, got to serve for the first time this year on the CFSI um, program planning committee um, headed by Preet Bassey, um, who many of you know from um, CPSE. Um, so Preet and I, Michaela, and, and several others um, worked on that. And I think um, and it, we really focused on the program this year because I think um, there had been some perception in previous years that the, the program uh, could, could use a little bit more emphasis on current issues in the fire service. So um, we have done that and made it, um, I, I think, a really great program this year. So the symposium um, is actually on the 22nd. Um, symposium goes into day two on the 23rd and then evening of the 23rd and night of the 23rd or reception and dinner. So with that, what I'd like to do is um, offer up to members of the Fire Service Membership Council Governing Committee who hold seats. Um, we, we would uh, like to get expressions of interest from you for funded travel to come into town um, probably as soon as May the 21st, departing as late as May the 24th. Um, and uh, trying to get a sense of who would like to fill out that table. So um, I guess I would ask you to send those to, uh, I would be glad to coordinate them. So if you would send them to me with a copy to both um, Christine Reed and to Tim Deal, um, and let us know if you are interested in coming to town. Again, that would be um, covered travel, and we'll be glad to coordinate logistics with you and so forth. But we're looking forward to a great event this year. So that's that's what I've got on that one. And Carl, can you um, do you have any information on those outside of the uh, governing committee um, if they would like to attend um, either the symposium and or the dinner? Do they just go? Is everything up on the website now? CSFI yep, everything website? is up on the website, and that uh, that link that I put in um, there for the dinner has got uh, event information, hotel reservation information, and also a schedule of events. So. Um, they, you know, anybody that's on the call here is, is obviously welcome to um, attend the dinner. It's a great national level event. Many of our members have gone previously. So um, just for those of you who don't know, the Congressional Fire Services Institute was um, was formed uh, a number of years ago to be the fire services single voice on Capitol Hill for uh, fire and EMS related, fire and rescue related um, issues. So rather than uh, each of our national organizations going and looking after our own interests, um, it is a place to bring those ideas together and to uh, to work together um, with our national organizational partners to be able to forward fire service interests, fire and rescue service interests on the Hill. So um, this is the one big event that they do every year. Um, I'm sure they would be glad to uh, have your support in that event, but also if you haven't heard about them and what they do, um, all the information is there on the website, and I'm glad to um, share that information um, as, a, as a member of the National Advisory Council for them too, to, um, to talk about some of that. Great, thank you very much. Of course. Uh, all right, our next meeting is Thursday, March 13th, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, this is the um, part of the agenda that anyone who may have questions or comments um, that you would like to express to um, the group on the call, um, please feel free to raise your hand 
and I will call on you um, once I see it. Any questions, concerns, information need? Yes, Gary. Uh, yeah, it said Thursday, March 13th, but isn't um, March 13th a Monday? Or am I uh, incorrect? Yes, you are correct. So it would be March 16th. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. I must have typed out that one. Good catch. I'll make the adjustment. I, I'm not smart. I just had a calendar right in front of me. <laughs> you're also and not you're as not. close to it as I am either. So <laughs> I know your calendar invitation should be correct right now. So I'll make the adjustment um, on the uh, on the agenda in the minutes. All right. Anyone else? Christina, I had a, a quick question. Yes. So I heard, um, I believe it was uh, Emerging Trends was looking into uh, research on sleeping pods. Did I, did I hear that right? Yes. Are any are any of the groups um, researching the privacy pods, not not specifically for sleeping, but the privacy pod um, for office type settings? Yeah, Christine, I'll just uh, I know that that was part of that discussion because it started with the sleeping pods, but then it expanded out into um the the privacy pods is that are coming out they're very similar in nature um although one is in an office setting the other one is could or could not be because we've actually found some of these sleeping type pods in the office settings that are used for rest relaxation um that sort of thing so we're although they're they're two different animals uh they are very similar but they are kind of included into uh, that topic that we have uh, we probably will be looking, maybe separating those out. And uh, I know uh, Kelly, feel free to, to jump in. I know um, he we, he's has some other information as far as that goes. Okay, thank thank you. I uh, I had to miss that that work session, um, but I do um, want to jump in on your next one. Thank you. Yep. Great, great question. Anything else? Because I'm also going to join it in for good of the order. If any anyone has any. Anything for the good of the order? All right, hearing none, before we adjourn, um, again, I would like to thank everyone to for attending the meeting, um, especially all of the new attendees. Very excited to see uh, your attendance and hopefully we'll see you next month or the coming months. Uh, with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I move, Sean, tell me. Thank you, Sean. Second. There a second. Great. I'm going to assume all those in favor will be aye. So thank you very much, everyone. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you soon. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Be safe, everyone.